translation. The rendering is not perfect, the wording is after the Western, which makes even men of superior intelligence confused, not knowing how to read it, while the ignorant and unlearned are apt to give wrong interpretations. The ten fasciculi one is somewhat fuller in paragraphs and chapters than the preceding one. But the sacred sense is not adequately expressed. When words are added and sentences are mixed in, the meaning grows murky, frequently causing errors, and the result is that the truth, bright and clear, becomes obstructed in its course on account of the local dialect. The Empress regretting this inadequacy ordered another translation to be made. The present one was made by comparing in detail five Sanskrit copies, and after examining the two Chinese translations. What was in accordance with the true sense was adopted, while what was not properly done was corrected. Many years of labor have thus ended in producing this splendid work, in which it is expected that the original Sense is accurately represented and scholars may thus be saved from committing further errors. The preface by the Empress Tsetien, Ubik is usually found attached to the Tiang edition, generally agrees with the account given by Fatsung, but there is one point that is not quite clear and seems to disagree with Fatsung. Among other things we have the following in the preface which concerns the translation itself. Originally the sutra was brought here from the western country, in the era of Yuan Chia. Gyudhab Hadra translated it, but it had not a wide circulation. Bodhirasi's version came out in the era of Yen Cheng. But it misses the original meaning in many respects. Full of reverential thoughts about the transmission of the good law. I earnestly wished for its prosperous condition. Ln the first year of Chu Shi, which corresponds in the cyclical commutation to the year of Kengsu, and in the sixth month of the year, during the summer season, I went to Chi Feng JT to escape the heat and enjoy the cool air by the river Yingshui, when at the San Yang Palace another translation was produced. The essentials of the three copies were inquired into and the perf ECT teaching was compiled into seven fasciculi. The very reverend Sikh Shananda of Utein WHP is a learned monk of the Tripitaka, and Fuli, a priest of Taishian. Su and others partook in the work. They have all the reputation equal to that of Taoan and Huayuan, and virtues like those of Matiang and Falan. They are again all worthy to succeed in the steps of Nagarjuna, and have deeply delved into the secrets of Asvaosha. They are equally great in the fragrance of their moral conduct and in the flowers of their enlightened minds. The jewel of their intelligence and the moon of their spiritual essence are both perfectly full. Therefore, they are capable of thoroughly understanding the mystery of Buddhism and manifesting the deepest significance of it. The final copying of the translation was completed on the 15th day of the first month of the fourth year of Chang'an. L and this flowery composition by the Empress Tsetien, the phrase to inquire into of three books, is somewhat ambiguous. Does San Pen refer to the three preceding translations? Or to three Sanskrit copies which they utilized as the first translation was already lost at that time, the San Pen must mean three original Sanskrit copies which they then had at hand. If so, the number does not agree with that mentioned by Fatsung as already quoted, for he says distinctly five copies instead of three. Could the character 3 be an error of the scribe's wife Fa Tsung who was a great scholar and an actual participant in the production of the seven fasciculi Chinese Langkavatara translation, has a better claim for authority, if choice is to be made between the literary remains of the time concerning the original texts, etc. However this might have been, it is clear that the seven fasciculi translation is apparently the best of all the Chinese translations of this important Mahayana Sutra. Seeing that it was produced by the joint labor of competent scholars both Indian and Chinese. But, strangely, almost all the commentaries written seer to be based on the four fasciculi one by Gajabhadra, one which is regarded as Bodhidharma Seopi handed over to his disciple, Huekei. 
To sum up, the first Chinese translation of the Lankavatara Sutra was completed between a d. 420 and 430, a second one appeared 10 or 20 years later and each was made into four fasciculi. It took over a hundred years for the third in 10 fasciculi to appear. While over 200 years elapsed before the fourth in 7 fasciculi was published, which means that the latest one came out over 300 years after the first. There are two Tibetan translations one of the Lankavatara Sutra preserved in the Kanjur. 1. The Peking Edition, Lxi, Sutra Division V. 2. The Peking Edition, S. D. V. The Lankavatara No. 1 consists of 9 volumes and is divided into 7 chapters while the last one bears no special title. The Peking edition makes no mention of the translator, but the Narthang and the Dirge are supplied with the following Kalafan. This is the Blessed One's teaching, translated from the Chinese book. The question here is whether it is to be rendered as China or as India, for it means both, and when it stands by itself, generally China. The translator whose name is Cha Scrub. Fa Chang in Chinese appears quite frequently in the Tibetan history of Buddhism as the one who translated the Tibetan into Chinese and the Chinese into Tibetan. And therefore there is no doubt that the Kalafan above referred to means that the Lankavatara is the translation by Cha Scrub from the Chinese version. But the fact that this translation agrees so well with the Sanskrit original edited by Dr. Bunyu Nanjo and the fact that the Peking edition says nothing about Cha Scrub or about the Chinese version, prove against the Kalafan found in the Narthang and the Dirge. The latter, therefore, must have crept into the text for some unknown reason, probably by mistake on the part of the scribes. It is thus impossible to ascertain the translator and the date of the Tibetan Lankavatara no. 1. As to the contents it agrees most with the Sanskrit text and in a lesser degrees with Bodhirasai and Sikshananda. The Lankavatara no. 2 is a translation of Gunabhadra's Chinese version and the Kalafan reads. By the order of the auspicious heavenly king this was translated and revised by the monk translator, Cha Scrub, a man from Goz, who collated the text with the commentary by Akariya Wenhui of China. The auspicious heavenly king here referred to is identified with King Ral Pakhen who ruled Tibet in the middle of the 9th century, a. D. Cha Scrub figures as stated above as a great translator of the Buddhist texts in the Kanjur. And among the Chinese Buddhist sutras excavated at Tun Huang there are about ten works bearing his name as translator. He was a great Tibetan scholar flourishing in the first part of the 9th century and did most of his work. At Tsiotasu in Ganzhou and Yangtiang Su in Shazhou. The Kalafan regarding Wary Hui's commentary with which Cha Scrub is said to have collated his translation is not quite clear. While there is no doubt that the present text is a translation of Ghul. Abhadra S4FS. Chinese Lankavatara as we can testify by comparing the two, one variation at least we find in the Tibetan is the insertion of a passage after the Gatha on folio 213a, line 4. This passage does not appear in any of the texts Chinese, Tibetan, and Sanskrit, except Sikshananda S, proving that the translator of the Tibetan Lankavatara no. 2 had this Chinese version with him. The following is a tabular view of the corresponding pages between the Tibetan and the Gunabhadra text. Generally speaking, there is just one Tibetan translation. For each one of the Buddhist texts making up the Tibetan Tripitaka, and in this respect the latter differentiates itself from the Chinese. For in IHE Chinese Tripitaka there are frequently more than one translation for the same text. That there are two translations of the Lankavatara, one from the Sanskrit and the other from the Chinese, is an exceptional case. This can also be said of the Suvarlaprabkasa Sutra, which has also two translations, the one from the Sanskrit and the other from the Chinese of Itzing. Incidentally, mention may be made of the statement in the Ikyuan Lu, the Buddhist catalogue of the Qiyuan era, according to which the three 
Chinese translations of the Lankavatara are said from the same text and to correspond to the Tibetan text. This is not exact, but there is no way here to find out whether this Tibetan text is in the singular or the plural. 2. Comparison of the contents of the three Chinese and one Tibetan translations and one Sanskrit text. A detailed comparison of the three extant Chinese and one Tibetan translations and the Sanskrit text of the Lankavatara Sutra has not been attempted yet. Except as to chapter divisions and other general aspects. Before I present my own views concerning the result of such comparison, a tabular view of the contents as regards chapter divisions of the five texts will be given on the following page. This table shows at once that the Gunabhadra version is very much simpler and shorter than all the others. That Sikh Shananda and the Tibetan agree with the Sanskrit as regards chapter divisions. That Bodhirasai has more chapter headings, I. E. is cut into shorter sections. That in Gunabhadra, the first and the last two chapters are missing altogether. That Gunabhadra has practically no chapter divisions whatever. And that while Sarvabuddha Pravakanaradeya has the character pin suffixed which is the usual Chinese term for the Sanskrit Paravarta. This title is almost like a subtitle to the Lankavatara itself, as if it were another name for the Sutra. What do these plain facts indicate? The first logical inference is that Gunabhadra being the oldest translation represents a more primitive Lankavatara than the others. Possibly the later texts had these three extra chapters added during the 100 years that elapsed between Gunabhadra and Bodhirasai. That they were mechanically added is shown by their having no organic connection with the older parts. As they have nothing new to propose, we should not have missed them, if they were not found in the text. The first chapter where Rava 1. A. The Lord of Lanka, asks the Buddha to deliver a discourse on his inner perception of truth, may superficially appear to be a sort of introduction needed for the development of the sutra. But there is no doubt that it was added later to supply this need, though really there was no such need from the beginning. The Raveo chapter was prefixed when there was a need on the part of the later Mahayanists to get the sutra connected with the story of Ravala and Ramakandra as told in the Rama when the latter came. To assume a definite form as an epic, which, according to scholars, took place probably in the 3rd or the 4th century of the Christian era. As the Gunabhadra text stands, the interpolation of the Ravana incident has no special help to offer in the understanding of the Sutra. The chapter of Dharni is a very short one, occupying about three pages of the Nanjo edition. This was also added when Dharni began to enter into the body of Mahayana literature, which took place much later in the history of Mahayana Buddhism in India. That the Sagathakam was also a later attachment is easily shown from the examination of its contents, but for this I will devote a special paragraph later. The Sanskrit text and Sikh Shananda are in full agreement as to chapter divisions, which undoubtedly points to one original. But a more detailed examination will reveal that the Sanskrit is more frequently in accord with Bodhirasai. A safe conclusion may be that the texts were all different. While Bodhirasai belongs to a later redaction and is to a great extent mixed with notes and glosses, which fact makes it roughly 1.4%. Larger than Sikh Shananda. As I noted elsewhere one the whole Lankavatara is just a collection of notes unsystematically strung together. And, frankly speaking, it is a useless task to attempt to divide them into sections, or chapters, under some specific titles. Some commentators have tried to create a system in the Lankavatara by making each paragraph somewhat connected in meaning with the preceding as well as the succeeding one. But one can at once detect that there is something quite constrained or far-fetched about the attempt. If this, however, is to be done successfully, the whole arrangement as it stands of the paragraphs must be radically altered. And this redaction is possible only by picking up and gathering together cognate passages which are found promiscuously scattered throughout the text. When for the first time a kind of system would be brought into the text. As the present form stands. Passages of various connotations are juxtaposed, and a heading indicating one of the ideas contained in them is given to the whole section, thus artificially separating it from the rest. 
Gunabhadra has done the wisest thing by simply designating the entire sutra as the gist of the Buddha's teaching. The chapter divisions in Bodhirasai are sometimes more or less rational, while we find four or five subdivisions made into one chapter in Sikh Shananda as well as in the Sanskrit. L. In this case, one Bodhirasai section expounds generally one main idea in prose which is abridged at the end in metric form. To be exact. For example, the chapter entitled Anityata, which makes up the third chapter both in Sikh Shananda and in the Sanskrit text, is subdivided in Bodhirasai into five sections or chapters. The first subdivided chapter, on Buddhasiddha treats of fifteen different subjects, none of which make any direct reference to Buddhasiddha. This title, therefore, does not at all indicate the contents of the chapter except in a most comprehensive way. LHE 15 subjects treated in this Bodhirasai chapter on Buddhasiddha are as follows. The Will Body. The Five Deadly Sins. Buddhata. The sameness of all the Buddhas, that not a word was uttered for preaching by the Buddha during his long life, being and non-being, the experience fact and preaching about it.